Welcome again to uh, St George's Church Glasgow uh, in Tamworth. I'm the Reverend Gary Simmons, the vicar here. A little bit later uh, in this service, Sarah, our curate, will be uh, reading from God's Word and sharing from it. Just to say that uh, for our uh, service today, uh, it's a simple format. Uh, you're welcome to be with us, whether you're tuning in around 10 o'clock or, or watching at another time both those from our regular congregation here at St George's or wherever you are uh, in the country or the world. The format for uh, our service today on this uh, third Sunday after Easter is this. In a moment I'll lead in one or two uh, simple opening prayers just to prepare our hearts uh, as we gather together in his presence. Then we're passing over to uh, Rob and Faye and the family uh, to lead us in a couple of songs of worship. Then over to Sarah who will read our gospel for the day and speak from that passage in Luke. Back to me for some concluding uh, prayers and intercessions and then finally again we finish in praise with Rob and Faye and the team. So great to have you with us. Uh, we hope as well, either link to this or uh, put out with the posting. Uh, anyways, if you want to get in contact with us uh, through a phone number, uh, through an email or through the website at www.stgeorges-glasgow.org.uk. Great to have you with us. Let's begin in prayer. Holy God, holy strong, holy and immortal. We come into your presence now. We ask that in this time together, you might meet with us through your presence. We take a few moments of quiet to reflect on this past week, to acknowledge our failings and sinfulness before you in thought and word or deed. And thank you, Lord, that with you there is forgiveness. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sin from us. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. And eternal God, source of all blessing, help us now to worship you with all our heart and mind and strength. For you alone are God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for ever and ever. Amen. One of the things we've been encouraging as well, before I just read a few words from Psalm uh, 63 uh, to lead us into our first time of worship, is the encouragement to be thankful. And lots of things have been coming in through the week. Here are just a few of them. Someone's thankful for the gift of flowers uh, left on their doorstep. Somebody's just thankful for God's word That's speaking to her this week. God's Word, the Bible. I'm thankful for my haircut uh, that was uh, myself and Avril, and uh, we've had some reasonable comments about it. You can make up your own judgment there. We're thankful that people are home from hospital. People have been thankful for the ministry of Spring Harvest last week. Somebody else is thankful uh, that the local chip shop is now open again. Somebody else thankful for her garden and looking closely at cherry blossom. It's always good to be thankful. In the midst of what we're passing through, wherever you are, may we still be thankful and praising before our God. So some words from Psalm 63. O oh God, I long for you from early morning. My whole being desires you. 
Like a dry, worn out and waterless land, my soul is thirsty for you. Let me see you in the place of prayer. Let me see how glorious you are. Your constant love is better than life itself. And so I will praise you. I will give thanks as long as I live. I will raise my hands to you in prayer. My soul will feast and be satisfied. And I will sing glad songs of praise to you. And so now over to Rob and the family to lead us in two songs of praise as we focus on the greatness of our God.
teach you a new song even though we can't be together as such we thought it'd be good to, uh, to learn a new one the song's called Great Things I'm going to bring us our Bible reading followed by a talk. The reading today is taken from Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him and he said to them what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, who was named Cleopas, answered him, 
Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are certainly bizarre times that we are living in at the moment. This week, three astronauts returned from the International Space Station, which has been their home since last year. And what a different world they have returned to. They, of course, had communication while they were up there. And so they have heard the reports of all that is going on, that the world has locked down its countries, that schools are closed, that people are staying home, that life is not as we knew it. But even having heard of all that was going on, the astronauts spoke of the unbelievable nature of it. Because from where they are, it looked like nothing had changed. From up in the International Space Station, the Earth looked exactly the same. And so even though they had been told what was going on, it was so strange that it was almost unbelievable. How can the reality be something that seemed impossible just weeks ago. In our reading today, we hear about the two men, the two followers of Jesus who were traveling away from Jerusalem, away from the place where the events of his death and resurrection had taken place. And as they are walking, Jesus goes to walk with them, but they do not recognize him. And they too are in a state of disbelief. And Jesus asks them what they are talking about. And they're amazed. How can he not have heard? So they respond to him. The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was going to be the one to redeem Israel. And now some of the women are amazing us with the things they are saying. An empty tomb, no body, angels, Jesus alive. Unbelievable. They had heard the reports, they have been told, and yet they do not believe. And how do we know that they've not believed? Well, firstly, they're really sad as they're talking to Jesus. And secondly, in verse, 30, what, uh, verse 21, they respond, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped, but that hope had gone. Their hope died with Jesus on the cross. 
and they are so absorbed in their disappointment over Jesus' death that there is no room for belief in his resurrection. Perhaps you have heard the stories before. Perhaps you have heard the reports. You've been told that there is a God who died for you. But it just seems so incredibly bizarre that you just can't believe it. Despite the predictions in the Old Testament saying that this was going to happen, despite the eyewitness accounts of the New Testament, despite the indisputable evidence that Jesus lived and was crucified, despite the fact that the church burst into action following the reports that Jesus was alive, and despite the fact that people were willing to die for that message, despite what your Christian friends have told you, you just don't believe it. These men didn't. And yet here they were, walking alongside Jesus in their disbelief. Their disbelief doesn't scare him off. That doesn't make him retreat. He stays with them, even on the road of disappointment and doubt. Perhaps Jesus has been walking alongside you all along on your road of disappointment and doubt, and you just haven't realised it. But it doesn't have to stay that way. It didn't for the men and it needn't for you, because God is calling your name today. It's not a case of, okay, that's good for them, but not for me. That might be right for them, but not for me. God wants you. God died for you. And God is calling you into relationship with him today. And maybe you do believe, and that's fantastic. But I think for all of us, to some extent, there is a limit to our belief. These two disciples did believe to some extent. You can see that in the way that they respond to Jesus in verses 19 to 24. The first few verses, they speak of the events as facts, of things that definitely happened. But there's a shift in verse 22 and they start to speak in a tone of disbelief. They believed he was a prophet sent by God. They believed the words he spoke were amazing and God inspired and the miracles he performed were mighty. They could believe that much. Prophet sent by God? Yes. Great teacher? Yes. Miracle worker? Yes. Raised from the dead? Mm. Not so much. What are we willing to believe and where do we limit God? Perhaps you're willing to believe it for back then, but you really struggle with believing it for the now. All right, God performed miracles back then, but not now. God moved in power back then, but not now. God transformed lives back then, but not now. Well, let me tell you, my God is the same yesterday, today and forever. God performed miracles back then and he's performing miracles now. God moved in power back then. He is moving in power now. God transformed lives back then and he is transforming lives now. How do I know? Because I have heard the reports. I have heard the testimonies of thousands of people throughout history, across the world, right up to today. I have heard stories upon stories of miraculous healings, of God moving in power, of revival, of God's transformation in people's lives. And not only that, but I have experienced all of that in my own life. I have my own stories of unexplainable miracles, my own stories of God moving in power in my life, my own story of how he has transformed my life. I live it every day. And no, every day is not miracles and fireworks and wonders, not at all, especially not at the moment. It's the daily slug of life. But I know that Jesus is with me in that daily slug of life. He walks with me on my journey, no matter where it takes me. But just, I am just another report. I am just another story. And you've heard the stories. You've heard the reports, just as the men on the road had. But something changed when the penny dropped and when they realised who Jesus was. And when did they realise that? in the breaking of the bread. 
the reminder of his body that was broken, the reminder of the sacrifice that he made on the cross so that we could know him, so that we could be in right relationship with him. The reminder that that body died and was laid in a tomb and yet here he was standing there alive. But I don't believe that God just wants you to hear the stories of others, to hear the reports of others. He wants to give you your own stories to tell, your own encounters with him. Now you don't have to understand it all, you don't have to have it all figured out, I don't, and they certainly didn't on the road. But what did Jesus do with them as he walked with them? He opened the scriptures and he explained them to them so they could understand a little bit more. Find someone in your life who can do the same. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a church leader, maybe it's the words of one of the thousands of books that help us to understand a little bit more. We are all on that journey still, not fully understanding it all, not having it all figured out, but trusting the one who walks with us in our disappointments and our doubt. And what happened next? In verse 34, it says, they said, the Lord has risen indeed. Then they told what had happened on the road. They believed and they told anybody who would listen. And they, along with the other disciples, spread the word and God moved in power and it spread all over the globe and he transformed lives and it continued throughout generations and it still continues today. It spread like wildfire then and it can spread like wildfire now. Don't be so preoccupied with everything that life throws at us on the journey that you dismiss the greatest opportunity there is to know the one who can walk with you every step of the way. And where do we limit God? Where do we draw our line of disbelief? What do we honestly believe our God is capable of today? Let today be the day that those limits fall down and let's see what our amazing God can do. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing with us from God's word this morning. We pray that God will continue to meet with us during this week through that word. As we draw to a close at our time together this morning, I'm going to lead us now in a short time of intercession, concluding with at the Lord's Prayer and the Collect for this week. So again, take a moment to be quiet as I lead us in prayer. Let us pray. The conclusion of uh, each bidding prayer, I'm going to say, living God, if you wish to respond, sustain and strengthen us. Living God, sustain and strengthen us. Lord Jesus, you came alongside Cleopas and his friend. We pray that you will come alongside those who are serving in our nation, in hospitals, in care homes, in so many ways. Come alongside those who are caring for others. Those who are seeking to bring healing into people's lives. Those who are leading our nation in different ways. Living God, sustain and strengthen us. Lord Jesus, your life ministered to those who were sad and grieving. We hold before you now all who have lost family and friends at this time. Again, a few moments for quiet prayer 
as you hold before God people known to you. At the Tamworth Deanery, we are especially remembering the life of Stuart Tyler this week a minister in the Meads Valley area. Lord, be their comfort, their light, their hope. Live in God, sustain and strengthen us. Lord Jesus, you opened up the scriptures. We pray that this week you will continue to speak to us through your word, that you will reveal yourself afresh to us and to others, that you might guide us and comfort us as we engage with your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have the words of eternal life. Live in God, sustain and strengthen us. Lord Jesus, you were known in the breaking of the bread. In our world, in our nation, in this community, in your lives. We pray for those who are suffering. For those who feel broken. For those that are at breaking point. Living God, sustain and strengthen us. And Lord Jesus, your disciples shared the good news of your risen life. Help us this week to share you through our words, through our love, through the time we have. Lord, up and down this land, will you continue to encounter people in their lives? And help us to be part of that. Live in God. Sustain and strengthen us. Amen. I'll lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Going to bring the collect for this week. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Just before I bring a final blessing, I invite you to take a moment 
or two of further quiet just to pause and reflect maybe on one thing that perhaps you've taken away from God's word uh, to us this morning. What might that be for this coming week? And so a final blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I'm going to pass over now again to uh, Rob and the team to lead us in our closing songs, calling us afresh to build our lives on Christ, the one who is always worthy of our praise.
is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart. Oh, 